Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda. This is my optimistic hat that I'm wearing today because it's uh, persistent yet again. Had a bit of muck on the camera lens there. Um, we're going to be shifting, we're going to be planting, we're going to be rearranging and we're going to be generally tidying but we're going to get some definite planting done today. I've uh, cleared that bed. All the potatoes are outside now, the potatoes that are in buckets and um, that's where they'll be remaining for the rest of their duration. But I've cleared that bed because we need to get the cucumbers in or at least some of them. And we're also going to be getting the brassicas out, at least some of them, and uh, potentially some weeding done, but we'll see how we get on with that, because obviously the weather is against us. But yeah, there'll be plenty to do today, boys and girls, so uh, stay tuned for that. Catch you in a bit. Okay, guys and gals, I hope you can hear me above the torrent, because it's absolutely tippling it down. But what I've done is I've filled that bed with absolutely every single pot with soil in that I could find. Chubs, pots, buckets, everything knocking around the site has been put into there, plus two bags of compost. So um, at least we've got some sort of a growing medium for the cucumbers when we put them in. I've also placed along the top of the bed, as you can see there, our tomato mix which is the blood fish and bone, a little bit of uh, organic chicken manure, some Epsom salts and the eggshells, the ground up organic eggshells. So um, that's what that's had a top dressing of. Now I'm going to mix all that in so that around the planting stations, which is this trench area down the centre, that's where the um, cucumbers are going to go. So all the nutrition is going to be mixed in, going down about 10 inches there, all through that area. And then we'll uh, we'll get to the next step. Okay, so for about 18 inches, it's all been massaged and uh, integrated into the soil um, where we intend to plant our cucumbers. Now the cucumber, yeah, the cucumber is a climbing, creeping, crawling little swine, and it likes to climb. So I'm I'm going to give it something to climb up. And so that it can spread its wings and set its fruits above ground level because you don't want the cucumber sort of hanging about uh, on, on the soil it'll just attract slugs and potentially rot off the fruit so we want that fruit to be above ground level if we possibly can so i'm going to create a structure now for it to climb up all right so that's the next phase i'll show you there we go a cane lashed trellis just use a zip tie at each uh, junction or juncture um, I put the top canes in first the two um, uh, eight foot top canes and um, so that the the vertical canes didn't scratch and uh, potentially tear my poly I had to bring them forward and pack them out so I was assisted there by uh, by Jeff Bezos it's just some rolled up cardboard that that uh, that box provided there and that's just brought it forward a, about an inch and a half and kept it away then from the poly behind it so that's going to be fine obviously I've not continued these either to the ends because again I don't want those canes poking through the poly when you get a strong wind the poly sort of breathes and goes in and out so I just wanted to avoid any chance and possibility of it uh, of it rubbing against the canes but as you can see there, there's a trellis when the cucumber grows and spreads its wings I put it at a little bit of an angle just to take a bit of the pressure off because the plant gets quite heavy when it's laden with the cucumbers which we hope it will be this year we don't want it to um, or rather we need it to be quite a substantial structure and I've zip tied it all together as you can see and it's pretty firm and stable that it's certainly enough for what we need it to be so yeah that's the climbing frame for them up the trellis they'll go and they'll be getting um, 
tied onto that trellis in the same way as you'd do with an espalier with an apple tree or something like that and they'll grow all along up and around the trellis work and then you can just clip the cucumbers off as they hang from the plant that's the plan anyway that's the plan guys and girls so I'm going to get seven cucumber plants into the ground here. I'm just going to even it out again because obviously I've had to stand on the on the soil to get to the back and fix fix the trellis frame. So I'm going to even that out again and sort that out and then I'll be getting the plants in. Okay. And so they're all in now. If you haven't seen that process before, I will stick a link in. But these are bottomless pots, the cut flower as the buckets that the flowers come in, the cut flowers, with the bottoms cut off, get riddled into the ground like that, and then these are the pop bottles, I'll just take one out so you can have a look, and these are the two litre fizzy pop bottles, and hopefully you can make out there, I've, I've drilled some holes into them, with a six millimetre metal bit, holes in the top as well they go into the ground pushed in and then you get that subterranean watering and what that will do is assist with the issues of uh, evaporation from the surface what we don't want is we don't want the stems of the plant to get sodden and wet so we try and avoid that, we let the roots go down. If you saw the one with the, the wise old elf the other day, the, the roots will go down, the water will be in the pop bottles, which will seep into the ground below, and the roots will go and seek that, seek that moisture out. Now, what we need to do now is get our cucumbers and make those bottomless pots as well. We're, go we're going to be copying Joel's method. Right, so the variety that we're doing this year are Tasty King F1 cucumbers from Unwinds, Unwinds Seeds. We started them off from seed. All I need to do is, re is get rid of the base of that. So I'm going to trim off about a centimetre of the base using my scissors, which are down there. And uh, then the roots will carry on below. They'll come out of the pot. They're quite happy in the pot, those plants at the moment, but they'll come out of that pot and seek what lurks below, which will be moisture and the nutrition that they need. They haven't had any nutrition as yet, these, but they will be doing. All right, so you can just make out some of the wispy hers, which are the roots sticking out of the bottom of that pot. That pot will now be going into there, so I'll just make a small hole and drop him in. I'm gonna be interested to see how these get on because that was remarkably easy. Now, the pots have been cut off at the bottoms and uh, the plants are now in the ground. So there's a bottomless, plot, a bottomless pot that the actual cucumber plant is sat in. And these are the Tasty King cucumbers. Yeah, started from seed on the last day of March. So they've actually been uh, growing now for coming up for well, actually, it is six weeks they've been growing. But I'm actually interested to see how these get on because I've never done it that way before. I've, I've put them in the pots like we've done over with the tomatoes, straight into the pots, but out, but out of the pot. So you've not, actually, you've not actually disturbed the plant itself and the roots are still bound within. But they'll send down the sort of search your tap root the fine roots this is the this is the plan and they will seek out the nutrition and the moisture below but we're not going to get the stems wet because they're in the pot and that pot is about an inch above the ground level within the bottomless cut flower buckets yeah so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to um get a long thin nosed watering can that one will do, won't it? That's a two litre watering can, but it's got a long spout on it and that's what I want. So if I take that, and then just water in, 
carefully as I can. Get around the back. It's the benefit of having these long spouts, you know, these long thin spouts on them. That'll get a good soaking. Give it a good soaking. And then I'll leave that then, like Joe does. Leave it. And don't do anything else until those roots find their way. That'll sink down below the surface. Probably go the full depth of the bed. At the moment, it's really uh, damp conditions and overcast. So it's not going to get too hot and humid inside here. So I'm guessing that that's going to be fine for the next week like that maybe more but that's what we want we want those roots from the bottomless pot to seek down inside the bottomless flower bucket and find their nutrition and moisture hopefully next week they'll be double in size then but we never know do we so yeah i'm going to do that i'm going to moisten the water or moisturize the water the soil I'm talking at my bottom again uh, by topping these up as well using the big one. Well, there he is, there's the big one. Get that leaf out or whatever it is. And so these go in and that'll be watering subterraneally. Subterranean water. Just keep pouring it until it gets to the base of that. Move along. Oh. Difficult to do one handed this. I'm looking at the camera and looking at the soil at the same time, which is making me skin eyed. But it's doing the job. And that goes. That'll all seep into the soil, that. And get it where you want it, which is by the roots. No point on the surface, really. Not with these types of plants, anyway. They don't like having a wet root. Well, a, a wet stem. You keep the roots moist. them relatively dry so you don't get the rot off so how many have I done there one I've done one two three four five so I need them so that's a 10 litre so I think I've only got a seven litre one as well so it'll be one of them and a seven litre and then every time I'm doing the feeding it'll be fed from that and I'll probably get I'll probably do two of them A litre apiece fed into the so the liquid feed will be going into here and the water will be going into here so it's not exactly like Joe's method but it's near enough it's a sort of trade-off between the two so I'm going to be top feeding and bottom watering but obviously the liquid feed will be mixed with the water as well so we can get a, a bit of a drink as well around the top roots and we'll see how that gets on. Looking at that, we've got seven cucumber plants. Yeah, seven cucumber plants. Now, if it runs to form, last year and the year before, we were getting between 25 and 30 cucumbers of good size, like 14 to 18 inches from each plant. And we, we were beset by spider mites as well uh, last year. And this year, I've got a remedy for the spider mites. So hopefully that's not going to happen this year. But uh, yeah. You're looking at over 200 cucumbers there, hopefully, from them plants. Fingers crossed. Right, boys and girls, let's crack on and try and get something else done, although it's still peeing down. Okay. I'll brave the elements for you. One of you fine young ladies the other day 
was asking about comfrey uh, because I said that you can get it you can get it down the lane we got some from down the lane there as wild comfrey and um, and planted it this is what it looks like the wild stuff and it grows like a weed now that's comfrey if you look at the flowers that's how they look the blossoms on it the bees like it very much but you're looking for that that's the shape of the leaf it's a spiky little devil so really if you're going to be harvesting it get your fork right underneath it try and split the roots if you find it in the wild bring it dig a hole plonk it in earth it up Bob's your uncle it will grow it'll grow well it grows quite vigorously comfrey it's the gift that keeps on giving now that's the wild stuff I'll show you the um, the shop bought stuff that was on the plot a couple of years ago yep that's the shop bought stuff that got planted in there a couple of years ago and uh, if you look at that we keep harvesting it chopping it back down these flowers are a little bit further along But it's a mass of blossom, isn't it? They tend to grow towards the top of the stem. You've got all the leaf down at the bottom there. This is the magic stuff. This is the comfrey. It's not quite as spiky, the shop-bought stuff. I don't know what the variety is. Uh, but we do know that it was a cultivared one. That's in the... We can use both plants, really. And you can also use... That's really good for the tomatoes and the cucumbers and all the rest of it that we've got growing up at the top what stinging nettle is good for when you make the tea out of the stinging nettle I'll put a link in the uh, description below to that one uh, the stinging nettle is really good for your um, brassicas just thought I'd show you this bed as we were passing it and the red dukes of York all coming on strongly and vigorously and then the last couple of days We've got some action in this bit as well. So as well as the horse's tails, we've also got the red dukes growing in there. Anyway, we're talking about brassicas, weren't All we? All right, so this is Bradley's cage, and before the deluge got too bad, I had started to plant up the broccoli there, or the calabrese, rather, on that side of the bed. <coughs> we've also got the kale, and the kale's going to be situated close to the front so we can keep harvesting it and picking it it's not going to be too difficult to get to uh, but we've got red cabbage there that's going to be planted in I've got my lime in the bucket there and I've also got some organic chicken manure pellets uh, which I'm going to have to rescue actually because that lime for a start that's going to be uh, sodden now and probably not worth uh, well it's going to have to be dried out that's for sure we've also got the pak choy We've got plenty of pak choy. We've got the that's further along than that stuff there. One of them's looking a bit sickly. I won't be planted in the sickly ones, so I'll have to take out what uh, what's not looking too clever there, and um, and plant the rest. In. But we'll have to discard some of that um, pak choy. It'll ju it'll just be like a a green light for the slugs if it's not in good health. And um, so yeah, up there the kale. There's the calabrese, calabrese broccoli, red cabbage and pak choy. I'm going to try and get that out this weekend if I can, it needs to go out for sure. Now just nipping back to the subject of potatoes, these are some of the first earlies that we've got in. I've put them in, in alphabetical order, these were the ones that were in the um, Tiki Tunnel 2 where I've just planted up those cucumbers. These were in the way of the cucumbers, I've moved them out of the way and we're in alphabetical order there, we've got the charlotte yeah, and then we've got the Pentland. I believe it's the Pentland. Yeah. And then the Rocket. So if the the card disintegrates, I'll know because they're in alphabetical order. I know what I've got. I know I've got the Charlotte, the Pentland and the, the Rocket. Um, but I'll know what order they're in. I mean, I can always label them up, of course, but uh, I don't have any labels at the moment. So if I just know I've got two of each, two new potatoes in each one of those buckets, then uh, we're laughing. Now, there's uh, always the worry, guys, when the weather's like this, 
not particularly windy today but it has been bouncing down the rain that they're going to get a bit beaten up especially these uh, ones that are further along these potatoes that are further along these are the shop bought uh, ones the um, the, the potatoes that just went past the best that we've uh, filled some buckets with there's only one potato I think in each one of those but they're looking beaten up aren't they that's the, that's the rain that's done that the bit of wind and rain has done that so what I'm going to have to do with those is I believe I think I'll have to um, cordon them off put canes in Maybe even move them from this position because it's not very well sheltered up at the top here. I'm going to have to move them from this position, put canes in and then string round them to try and keep the stems up. Because these stems are just going to snap and, 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 and be no good then. We don't want that. Now speaking of crops that may need to be cordoned, we've got these critters and they need to go out tomorrow. Now those are 16 Unwin's Goldcrest sweet corn. They need to go out then, for sure. So uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's show, the Sunday episode where they'll be going out. And also, look at these. I've neglected these terribly. But I've got just the spot for these sweet peas. In fact, I'll show you because it's just stopped raining. I'll show you where we're going to be placing them. Now obviously I'm going to have to clear out some of these uh, trellises but they're going to be uh, planted in here, the, the uh, sweet peas. I'm going to clear out some of that um, weed that's in there. Look at that, it's a swine that. Bind weed. That's going to come out so I'm going to clear that tomorrow and I'm going to put the... Um, I might actually use this trellis to be honest. In fact I will. I'll put the trellis on top of each other and the sweet peas are going to go in the front here. And then hopefully they'll climb up nice and bonny. But again, they've got to be um, they've got to be hemmed in. Right, now as for the... What did we say? The sweet corn, that was it, the sweet corn. And here we are. This is going to be the sweet corn bed. And it's one that I created and made earlier, this one. But that's where our 16 sweet corn are going to be going. Into that bed. I might have under-egged it, under it a little bit, that. Because I reckon 16 sweet corn might be a bit uh, overly spaced in there. But never mind. That's Again, it's going to be cordoned. We've got these at each end. And I'm going to be sticking something in there, I reckon doing the cordoning with but yeah it's just a support for the corns as they as they grow these ones get quite high they get to about six feet high and when the wind hits them it could be an issue that but that's going to be the bed so yeah stay tuned for tomorrow's exciting episode for all that guys and gals been a great day down here i'm going to see actually as well if we can get the wise old elf if he's available to do some pruning on these. That's my grapevine, white grape that. Like a Chardonnay, I think it's a Chardonnay grape, that. But I need Joe's uh, wisdom and expertise on that. It got cut short actually, the wise, the wise old elf one that we, when we were doing the grapes got cut short a little bit. So if he's up for it tomorrow, Joseph, Joseph Lowe, will do that. I'll be on in the morning, Joe, from about 8 o'clock, if you're about. Right, let's get back inside. Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Um, hope you're having a fantastic weekend, and you've been down the plots doing your bit. It's dinner time now. I'm going to get off and get something to eat with um, the kids and the good lady farmer. But I'll be back on the plots tomorrow, don't you worry about that. And we'll have more fun in Japes. There's some more of that uh, red cabbage there. And I've also got these cauliflowers, I think they are, haven't they? No, that's calabrese as well. Monclanto. Oh, there's, there's the cauliflower in there. 
I just need the space. All the onions are taking up all of the space at the minute. But we're getting there, guys. You've just got to uh, keep growing with your heads down, haven't you? And you'll get there in the end. Right. You're wonderful. If you're a lady, you're beautiful, fragrant, and sophisticated. If you're a gentleman, you're strong, forthright, masculine. And if you're something in between, well, you're something in between, aren't you? And we love you all. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, God bless, and bye-bye. Namaste.